stories that here here are true stories of events that unfolded in the magic kingdom upstairs in the wig room involving a new yorker a cop and possibly a stripper <laughs> sandy o Murford, also known as sandy de prima we have to get into this irish part of it here is presenting a pathway speech well sorry a, a speech we said we weren't supposed to say pathway speech sorry paula she's presenting a speech today from the engaging humor level two option two introduction to vocal variety please welcome to the virtual lectern sandy asking for five to seven minutes for a speech entitled the stage all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players they have their entrances and their exits, and only one man in his time plays many parts. That was a quote by William Shakespeare. Fast forward quite a few hundred years, and Woody Allen once said, your audience teaches you how to be funny. Merge these two together, and guess what? The world is a stage. No matter where you are, you have an audience. And sometimes somebody could just break into your audience and give you another funny speech. I'll give you an example of that. Quite a few years ago, I was in the Magic Kingdom tunnel on the bottom floor. We had two wig rooms, one downstairs and one upstairs and the one upstairs goes there's a door that goes right into the park well i went upstairs one day to see irene irene is brain spanking new to florida from new york she is a long islander at its best to describe irene irene she would say I used to work in the hair salon and they'd be going higher, higher. That's how she described her job. Yeah. She was quite the entertainer and she didn't mean to be, but I went to bring her hairpins. So I went up the elevator and I walked in with this box and I had my back to the door and all of a sudden I seen her expressive New York face go oh, like this. And I looked behind me and this man, he had these arms like Lou Ferrigno, this tight t-shirt on where you could see the abs through his shirt. He had on these tight jeans, cowboy boots. And he walks in and she about fell on the floor. You know, she was like awestruck. And I'm thinking, the first thing I thought was he must be a Gaston because he looked like somebody walking in going, I am Gaston. But then he spoke. Hi, I'm looking for Cherie. And I'm thinking, I just looked at him like, is that really his voice? But then you realize you can't make that face because he might think you're making fun of him. Well, yeah, I'm looking for Cherie. And, and she goes, that's me. And he goes, he pulls out a wallet and he says, I'm with the police department. I'm here to arrest you. And we're, but Irene did not take it seriously. Irene's behind me going, through her purse and I'm like what are you doing Irene and she's like I'm looking for dollars that's a stripper I know that's a stripper I go Irene he's a cop and she goes no that's a stripper I know I know a stripper when I see it that's a stripper uh, Cherie either is having an affair or somebody sent her a stripper you know Irene put the dollars back she he puts the handcuffs on her starts to lead her out of the room and the next thing you know, Irene's going, wait, she runs up and sticks dollars in the back of his pants. And he's going, inside of his head, you could see his face was almost green. He reaches around with this giant Lou Ferrigno arm, grabs the dollars, shakes his head, and off they go. They go downstairs. Apparently, there's a holding cell down there somewhere that I didn't know was there. 
I get a phone call. I didn't even leave the room yet. I'm getting a phone call. This is Sergeant McGee. Can you please bring Cherie's purse down and her belongings to the holding cell in the tunnel? And then he tells me how to get there. Well, I go to the elevator and I all of a sudden these arms just fling in and go, I'm going with you. Irene was going. I'm thinking, oh, this ought to be fun. I get to walk down the hallway, down the middle of the tunnel with Irene going, what a hot man this is. Yay! I'm so excited. I get all the way down the tunnel. I find this holding cell where we walk in, and there's a desk, a cage with Sheree in it, and this big, huge man behind the computer going, I got something for you. And Irene peeks out behind me and he goes, here's your two dollars. Thank you for the compliment. That was the first time in history of Irene's life that she was completely silent and couldn't say a word. She turned around and ran out and she was silent for the rest of the day. And this happened on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Needless to say, this man, this man who looked like Gaston and sounded like Minnie Mouse, bursted into my audience and gave me a speech. He didn't even need to do anything. He made me learn what was funny. And that proves Woody Allen's theory that your audience teaches you how to be funny. So watch the people around you. Watch everything. Take note. And guess what? You'll be sitting here and find your funny telling this lovely speech too. You have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Sandy. I won't even attempt any of those accents. You do that New York way too well. Now, in the next part, we do a round robin. I know we're all green of envy from that speech, but today, May Tran will be leading a group. She will be leading the facilitators. So welcome to the virtual lectern, May. Thank you. I'm honored to be the facilitator today. Please line up. Ah, Vivian, then Vicky. 30 seconds. Is she there? Go ahead and move on and we'll come back in case. Okay. Would you like to go ahead, Vicky? Sure. Uh, Sandy, you're always so, so funny. I love your personal stories, but I would have to say that today, I think your background distracted from the story a bit because it wasn't in the setting. And you also have a slight habit of getting a little too close and you're kind of doing this bobbing thing when you're talking, which was a little distracting. So be careful of that. It distracts from your story, which is great. Thank you, Vicki. How about Susan? Yes, your challenge today was vocal variety and we heard that tremendously with the voices and such. Uh, additionally, one of the things that you were doing with your motions were reaching behind you in a way, and you actually came out of frame a few times when you did that, off to the side, so be mindful. Maybe sit back a little bit so we can see more of your torso so that you're not going out of frame, but you have got those voices down, girl. Great. Thank you, Susan. Koki. Uh, thank you so much for the such wonderful speech. I always enjoy her uh, Disney experience as I had another conversation with her that uh, she had uh, so much funny experience that she can share uh, from the, the Disney experience. And uh, yes, um, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Koki. Do we have more time? Or should we go next? One more? Francine, please. 
I'm her um, pathways evaluator. Can you give her some feedback from someone else instead? Okay. Tyree had, his, Tyree had his hand up a second ago. Okay, Tyree, please. Uh, Thank you. Very, very quickly, Sandy, well organized, good characters, a lot of richness for humor. Uh, just one line to, to add some humor. Your character name, I believe, was Eileen. You said she was, at this time, she was silent, she was speechless. You could use a wordplay. She zipped her lip and then use that facial zip. So always look for the other small opportunities for, for humor and that gets you engaged with your audience. Good job. Thank you, Tyree. Back awesome. to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, May, and for the people who thought they were safe, will not make or online for the next round. Now our next speaker. Now, as we all 